Yeah, good map for Eternal Fire, of course. One of their strongholds. Starting on the CT side here, Tyloo happy to just take their time, build themselves into the round. They've got a bit of utility to work with, a smoke and a molly. Had advanced disposal armor across the board outside of that. Quite a lot of util for Eternal Fire. They got that double nade, so keep that in mind once that bomb plant potentially comes through. Major has that kit as well, but oh, just so much damage done, and Kallax isn't expecting them to, be, them to be so close to window. And all the kills will come flurrying in for Tai Lu. Major 0.82, so their CT sides have been a problem. Obviously, CT sides in general have been challenging in CS2, but it's certainly something Eternal Fire needs to get under wraps. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say, I mean, other than yesterday, the Nouns game, <laughs> which was a, just a turn up for the books in so many ways, I've been more impressed with the explosivity of the Eternal Fire T side more than their CT side. And that's always been the case, to be honest, on Vertigo. Good start in this round, though, from Wicadia. And they need a handle hold in this opening map, even if it's so early. Who's feeling the most awake in the minus four temperatures of Yongshiping? Mm. Not, in the, not in the studio, of course, but still. Yeah, but thankfully, but getting there. a bit more comfortable. I mean, we're in shows right now, at least I am. Yes, so... I'm in my hat. Up, 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 up. Oh, okay. That's great from Mercury. I thought Xantaris gets that kill every day of the week. That levels it back into a four versus four now. A side's been compromised, forced backwards by the Util, and Tai Lu. I guess this is their round for the taking until Major is able to get a frag back. The bomb plot is going to come through, but the retake absolutely on the cards now with the frags that have been found. Yeah, walks to hit the wall bang there toward Advent. So much damage done. Major then spams through and finishes it off. How does Mazea get involved with this one to try and help out Mercury? Mercury's still stuck on default, and then when Mosea peaks, he gets removed by Woxic. And when he's the main man getting boosted up like he was there, he is always the one to take those boosts, mostly as the star player. Usually he's the one to get them. But oh my goodness, look at this flash in through the B stairs. That's a bit of a change up. Eternal Fire looking for some deep control. And to be fair to Acadia, at least he gets his one for one. But it's only a one for one. Yeah, CT side, that's probably not ideal, right? T side happy to oh. go for that exchange. Woxic has his head ripped right off by Mercury. Yeah. He's going to do the exact same thing to Xantara his tough times continue at the start of Vertigo. That's round over. He's... We didn't see him with the AWP much yesterday against Nouns. Uh, excuse me, against Monty, rather. But th that was just a problem with the economy. He yeah. wasn't really able to get the gun involved either way. Eternal Fire. They do manage a decent arsenal of weaponry coming into the sixth year, and they've got that opening frag as well. It's so important they don't lose this next round, otherwise things really start to snowball out of control for them. Yeah, Tunnel Fire being a little bit extra proactive toward B-Stairs in this game so far. Major once again will kick off the round. Mazea will drop, and of course it leaves them in a bit of a weird situation where they're once again forced to somewhat retake A before the bomb's even been planted looking around the outskirts of the site to see if someone has lurked up, wary of Mercury, perhaps doing the same thing again. But this time it's going to be three toward mid for Tai Lu and Major. Just jiggle peeking back and forth, looking for information. When does he get shot at? There is the timing. Now he can fall back to a more defensive angle. And of course, with two players in elevator, this could make it very interesting for Tai Lu. They're about to go into the mixer, but Mercury's turned up today. Another big headshot, but Major and Woxic will turn up for some of their own. Yet yeah, Jamyang will at least take Woxic. And the HP, of course, is very low. The time is very low as well. Kalix has helped out toward Kaze, and now Jamyang is incredibly stuck. And I think he realizes that the best course of action is to save Kaze's AWP. And he has given a really Impactful start to this game, appearing above those ramp smokes, of course. 
And when you get that opening pick as a T-side toward the bottom of A-Ramp on Vertigo, it can be so rough as a CT side to try and retake that. You need at least three riflers sometimes to even regain control. Yeah, and that's if you even want to go for it, right? It is a big gamble from Arcadia to sort of play that position. I mean, it's really popular with the AWP on the T side. Most popular option to just play bottom of ramp, hold the top of the smoke there and wait to see if somebody pushes into your, your scope, into your crosshair. And off the back of getting that kill towards the A side, Tai Lu head towards the opposite side of the map here. They know they're forced to have drawn some sort of a rotation. And Eternal Fire, they've got three players leaning in towards A right now. It's only Mage on the opposite side of the map, and he has a big job to do. Oh, it's a nice start, but he will get deleted by Jam Young. And it's those sort of trades that are so critical for Tai Lu during the course of this entire series. And it's so promising that we're seeing them hit them so early on. 3v4, utility is available, and it'll definitely be one they'll go for now with Kalix. Catching oh. Advent, but hang on a moment. Mercury's on a flank. Could he be the key man once again? Yeah. Not a single player from Eternal Fire is considering this. This could be brilliant. As soon as this smoke fades, even if it doesn't need to fade, he's got a freebie. But Xantaris took Jam Young in the meantime, so Mercury just has to stay alive. But Kaze's on the server. Walks it. Can't deal with Kaze. Side series if we go the distance. We know Overpass is a really good map for Tai Lu. Probably just exceeded by Nuke in terms of their best map, but either way, Alex is taking first contact here and he's hoping his teammate can play off of him. That was very risky from Kalex, actually, once he'd been seen. That is a very nice team ollie to move Major out of that position, and of course they should now know that it was a double setup there. I think yeah, there was enough good. time between Kalex shifting away and that Molotov coming in to think it's just one player. Should be obvious that it's two. They're still trying to make up their mind. Bottom of ramp again. Kaze has been waiting here quite often. And they've been very successful with it. Yeah, it feels like Tyloo realized that they've forced those players back towards B stairs. So they know they've deprived Eternal Fire of information. They've also got A ramp control. So the CTs don't really have any idea of what's going on right now. They're kind of just having to go for a bit of a gamble. That's the worst part, right? When you don't have ramp control as a CT, you just let yourself be executed upon. But thankfully, this time, the sprays through the smoke and the HE from Azantares is going to work out beautifully. It cancels it out this time. Cars is still towards sandbags, though. And that's not something Eternal Fire knew of just yet. KD will go down, go down for free on that one. And Mazea is still here. That's a clean headshot. There's a gap player as well, but Woxic just about recovers it. So it leaves Kaze 1v3 and double stack. Still rear its head. Zantares gets his second and now he's awoken as before. But this time, Molotov comes in and puts Wakadi down to 39 HP already. Without him having seen a soul, but he's happy to take those duels either way. And Eternal Fire have realized what cancels out Tai Lu at the end of this first half. And it's been a relatively impressive recovery, to be honest, from 6-2. It's looking like it'll be ever closer to that 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, Tai Lu are looking like a completely different team in these past four rounds, though. Not able to get any ramp control. Wakadia and Woxic, the duo working a charm towards ramp right now. And I love the fact that they haven't hung around here either after they get those two kills. They've locked their profits in. They head in towards the bomb site. They force Tai Lu to make that next move. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? You almost feel like in these last four rounds of the half, if they had just run up super quick with the likes of Mercury, who we saw hit some ridiculous entries to basically win around single-handedly earlier on in the half, maybe that would have been a bit more successful than taking it slow like this. But we're all experts after the event, of course. Woxic in position. We'll swing at a mid-round timing to try and catch off Kaze, but actually gets caught very much in the open. That's a little bit dangerous for Eternal Fire, but Zantaris and Makeda are, of course, still here. Mazea will get taken down, and now Jam Young is last alive. Molly into a double that might move Major away. It's a little bit deep, but they'll all peak at the same time. Double duelies, Mercury and Advent. We saw Advent win a pretty important 1v2 with the duelies yesterday, but Let's see if he's in the same sort of situation today. Cars 8, Peter Pound in elevator. So it will come in, and it's actually a bit of a, a carbon copy to what Tyler wanted to do on their T-Pistol. Yeah. Now Eternal Fire's going to try and put it into practice, and Wicadia doesn't check Advent. Gets at least a one for one, at least a quick trade from Kalex, and the bomb is down already. But it is only a 3v4. 
Good position from Zantaras as he plucks Kaze out the air. He's able to maintain the spot as well, although Jam Young jumping around the corner. I love that approach coming through from him. Throwing caution to the wind. No kits in play though for Tai Lu, so it's going to be tough for him to make the retake happen, but Ooh. that doesn't matter when Jam Young's hitting shots. Gap, and unfortunately, as a gap opened up in his head, re aggression from Tai Lu going to be the approach off the back of a flash. Uh, not necessary though, they've got the man advantage already. They want more though. They want information, they want control, but now we've reduced the game to an even number standing, and there's still time here for Eternal Fire to play with. That was a gamble from Tai Lu. You don't really often see a CT side try and retake ramp on Vertigo when you have an advantage. Yeah. And you know it's been taken as well. Not only that, but Eternal Fire playing with the Force Fire. So you have the weaponry advantage, you have the man advantage. You don't really need to try and make those sorts of plays, I don't reckon. Either way, Eternal Fire, radio silence from them there afterwards, but it's going to be a second wave in towards the, say, bomb site. They have got a flash between them as they look to try and make their way forward. 17 seconds on the clock. They're leaving this one incredibly late. Ooh. Late enough for Mercury to turn his back. Woxic hits a great shot, and Mercury can't do anything about the bomb plant. That's uh, so awkward. Woxic, another big shot on the rifle, I think it's fair to say. I'm going to try and strafe back away. That's Kalex falling back to Crane, and he'll manage it. No kit on either Jam Young or Mercury, and that is the issue here. How are they going to speed up this retake? Is there a kit dropped on the site somewhere? I am not sure at the moment. Woxic toward Gap. Jam Young is about to face him. It's going to be a tough angle to hold, though, and as I suspected, Jam Young hits, hits the peak's advantage. 2v2 taps on the bomb. It's going to be a massive brawl toward Ramp. They know where Major is, but he just needs to waste the time, and I think he's going to be... I've done enough here. Jam Young is out of there. Of pace, which is what we used to see from Eternal Fire in Pro League. Just give the CT side no time to relax up this ramp area. And Mercedes already got his one for one. Saw him do that so many times. Always good for that one. Thankfully for Tyloo, they're able to get one and back off. Yeah, but you take that if you're Eternal Fire. You've leveled the numbers up very early on and you have great control here. You've also forced the CTs to deploy more utility than what they would have liked to just keep you at bay. And there's so much time now for, for Eternal Fire to decide what they'd like to do from here. They can just leave one player posted. They can rotate back. And they can just completely sell the fake. They've got so many options. Yeah. And then we'll chuck in that little one-way smoke there on the side of the crane. But there's no one to really play with it. And he spots a little head in the gap of that left-hand side smoke. Oh, the Molotov on the oh, white box no. behind. Kallax is going to burn down Mercury. They were trying to prepare a boost on that white box to try and see above these smokes. And the Molotov stops them from doing so and gets a kill with it as well. Jam Young's position has been seen. There would be no reason for him to flash that otherwise. There's one thing about Zantara is even if he, get, if he dies, his crosshair placement will always be pretty decent. Yeah, that's a great pick from Kaza using that cheeky little hard to clear angle on the edge of the white box, despite the fact it was checked by Zantara as Kaze got there first. Now, it's time for Wikadia to perhaps pounce toward A. We've got Advent close up. Is he about to be flashed in? He is. He needs to get himself a kill. He'll manage it. Kalex will trade it, but it's now a 2v4 for EF. I love that from Mosia. It's what I wanted to point out there. The fact that he took up Kaze's position because in the death camp from Zantara's, he would have seen Kaze falling back in middle. Mosia yeah. shifts into his spot there in mid and works out perfectly. Everything falling into place right now for Tyloo in this all-important round. It's been pretty nice on the rifle so far, but he's going to need to find a few ridiculous shots here. 30 seconds for Eternal Fire. Can Kalex get a couple? He cannot. He cannot even get the one. And now it's Woxic. Would be a one versus four, but Tyloo now know not to do any form of peeking. The gap player just needs to hide. 15 HP. Bomb is dropped in the open. He'll manage to collect it. But of course, there's not really any time for this, knowing there's still a player ready to face him as soon as it's tapped. Even a Molotov stuff from Plus oh, for the CT area. That's a nice bit of protocol. Eternal fire. Thankfully for them, they, of course, still have everything. And they'll have a buy in reserve as well. Even if this round is to go awry. Now, Mercury aggression from the bottom of ramp. You see this so much. So many teams. But there will be a, a nade to break that smoke. This time, though, it works out in Mercury's favor. That is a lovely first pick. And he even looks like he's going to get away to wow. the back. And even get a second on Moxic. That is impressive, and still with 36 health to spare. Yeah, very brave there from Mercury to kind of hang around and find that second kill as well. Massive advantage now for the team. That's a beautiful kill out of Zantara's. My god. Barely offered up an inch, but he takes the country mile. See that so often. 
He loves that country mile. Must have a nice landscape. Mm. Calix waiting for aggression from Tyloo. He'd be absolutely right. Jam Young is close up on the plywood. Boost up on the stairs. That could be hard for Jam Young to face. And yes, that's a rough one. And Santores, here we go. That is what he's capable of, cracking open the bomb site all alone, but the round is still very much on. Mazea's doing all the work right now, trying to waste the clock for his teammate, Advent, to come and help out. Smoke back towards CT, and it looks like they will get the bomb down comfortably, but there's a bit of a peak over the top of the smoke, and Major will be taken down. It's down to Zantares, and he needs this ace for his team, but he's not expecting Advent on the flank. Very easy, unfortunately, for Tyloo. Mercury, once again, spamming down through those ramp smokes. This is a huge round in the context of this game, but that's a whippy one for Adve from Advent. And we mentioned, of course, his individual level can be an issue sometimes. He's had a few important kills in this game, even though he's 9 and 14. But it's those sort of situations where getting one for one is so critical for Ty Lu, and he isn't able to manage it this time. Really good work out of Orcadia. He's happy to be the tip of the spear here for the team. Happy to be the one thrust into the front lines. Take those early gunfights. It's not a comfortable place to be, but he's been doing a really good job in that regard. Kaze has a massive job on his hands right now. Orb in play for the first time here on the CT side. He's on the correct side of the map as well. Eternal Fire start to dump their utility in towards the side. Kaze has not been displaced. He's got support as well, but no, the support doesn't have a favorable angle. So Kaze has been caught in the sidelines. Now that means Mercury has to make good for that mistake, but he's only going to be able to get the single kill. Mosey is running out of health at a rate of knots and surely no chance for Tyloo to recover. Jam Young has to do so Again. much work here on the flank, but he's been spotted already, and that's going to be eternal fire up to 11. Yeah, and then spotted for the second time as well, trying to at least make something happen on a flank. Maybe not quick enough, maybe not confident enough to push it a little bit sooner. Voxix has his ult, by the way. Yeah, finally. I mean, they've got enough money for it this time, so I guess they're thinking, you know, why not? It is map point at this stage. Let's give it a go. Hasn't been a necessity for Eternal Fire, basically, in this entire game. Oh, lots of burn damage for Jam Young. Oh, and even no. though Mazea was looking for the boost, Xantares has repeated it again. And oh. the Calyx is going to go even deeper for it. Kaze will be removed. It's Mercury and Advent, and Wakadia hits two edges.